the most important thing on this lake to learn is that the speed zone out in front. Uh, it's about three quarters of a mile long and maybe 150, 200 yards across at its widest point. Now this is where the skiers, the speed boaters, the tubers all have to stay and they have to go counterclockwise in this. Down that way, all the way to the end and up that way. And the thing with the skiers that you got to remember and the tubers that's more important than anything, when you lose a skier or a tuber, you stop, slow your boat way down and turn right. Because if you turn left, another boat's going to T-bone you. So you got to be so careful. And, and I've, I've been preaching this and preaching it, preaching it. And the two on the tube thing, people say, well, that, that's not dangerous. Well, when you got 15 boats out here and you got two on a tube, and if you lose one, you might not know he's gone or she's gone. And I've seen that happen. Yeah. It's, it's just, it's different. People just don't understand it. This lake is, is adequate for a lot of things, fishing in particular. This is a fabulous bass lake. How many kayaks do you think there are? Oh, I'd say 100 or better. Either. Yeah. And, and the only thing that's tough about kayaks at night, most kayaks don't have any lights on them. Yeah. And bam, it hasn't happened as yet, but we're trying to prevent it. Most of the fishermen, they'll have a light here on their hat. Right. Now they don't have the, the red and green on the front, or you know, like you'd like, but the hat looks good. At nine o'clock in the morning, you'll see five ski boats lined up down there at the end, waiting for the light to go from yellow to green. And then these are, these are, Tremendous skiers now. These aren't their amateurs. Yeah, I know. These yeah. guys really know what they're doing. And they'll go one at a time. And down they go, they make their run, come back, and they pull in and another one will make his run and come back. And, you know, right now, if I went out another 10 yards that way, we'd be in over a hundred foot of water. This lake is real deep. Okay. But in the no wake zone, there is no counter in clockwise and clockwise direction. You can go either way you want. And people will say to me, well, Paul, can I go across the ski zone? I said, sure. But you got to yield right away to the boat school, and this way and the boat school and that way. When I first started, and that was 14 years ago, I was the only lake patrol person. And I had no idea, I had no idea what 4th of July was like. And they set the fireworks displays up on the dam. And the first year the guy called me, uh, this runs it, and he's a country fella, but a very nice guy. He says, Paul, I want you to keep them boats back 300 feet from the dam. I said, 300 feet? I said, why? He says, you see them cannons? I said, yes, sir, I do. He says, if that fell sideways, it'd blow a boat clean out the water. <laughs> if the wind was blowing this way, they were all drifting into the fireworks. So I just stayed in front of everybody, went back and forth and back and back. Okay. Last year, the wind was blowing this way. It was the best fireworks display I'd ever seen. Because it kept all the boats kept drifting yeah. back. Okay. One of the, the problems that we have out in the ski zone, when the, when the ski boats come out, especially the new ones, they've got things inside their boat that they can set it, and they can make a three foot, four foot wave behind your boat. And that's for the wakeboard guys to ride. And that's all well and good. But everybody that's boats are up on shore. You, when someone's like creating a dangerous wave, do you give them a warning first? Or how, how does the process go? I, I've always been that whatever you give me when I tell you about it is what you give. If the person says, all right, Paul, I'll take care of that. It won't happen anymore. Good, we're done. If they, oh, well, I, I think I have the right to do that. I say, well, you know, there's such a thing as being dead right. And uh, if they want to argue some more, then I give them a ticket. I, I go the opposite of counterclockwise. That, that way, when the boats are coming, they're coming right at me and they say, I don't like people coming up behind me. I got you, okay, okay. You know, in, in the, when we've got people skiing with kids, there's a ton of them out here that can ski. Yeah. 
And when they when they start them out, you know, they want to start them out in the middle of the ski zone. I said, no, please don't do that. Yeah. Well, what do you suggest, Paul? Start him out right here in the idle zone, right outside the ski zone. Your boat's in the ski zone, but he's not. And you could get him up on plane before, you know, so you can see exactly that, what's that's going a good, on. That's a good tip. Yeah, yeah, and we're all for that. It doesn't say anything about skiers being to create too much waves. It's the, mm. the boats. Okay. The only time uh, you, you really get involved with a ticket in the idle zone is if they come out of the ski zone and stay up on plane and go back a couple hundred yards yeah. in the idle zone. Yeah. What would you say are the five most important things that if you were got a new guy coming out here, what do you what do you want him to be concerned about most of anything? Just, just Number one would be the wake no wake. Yeah. Number two is your operation in the ski zone. You got to go counterclockwise. When you drop your skier, you slow your boat down, make your turn to the right, come back your steer and pick them up. If you let them sit there, uh, a lot of times people don't see them. You know there's lights. See see the green light up above the, the shelter house at the beach. Can right. you see it? Yeah. Okay, and then there's one up there behind Willie's. And if in the summertime, say in June, July and yeah. August, 9.30, that'll go from green to yellow. 